What's going on guys? Hope everybody's having a great day. Please do me a favor, smash that like button for me, and if you get anything from this video, subscribe. So ABC News did a hit piece on true crime YouTubers. I'm a true crimer, right? So I have a problem with that, especially when it's coming from the mainstream media. Nobody even thinks that they can trust the mainstream media no more. The news is never telling you the full story. There is no such thing as an unbiased opinion when it comes to major network news. So to have them calling YouTubers biased when we're doing commentary about what they're reporting and they want to pretend that it's us that push all the conspiracy theories just because we don't agree with the narrative that they want to push or maybe not even that we disagree but we ask questions about their narrative that they don't want to have to answer right I mean, it's real easy for me to tell you a story of how this person did that. And if you have no reason to disbelieve me, then of course, you're just going to take my word for it, right? But if I lie to you, and 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 then, you know, I lie to you some more, then the next time I tell you something, you're probably not going to take my word for it. And if I'm telling you about how this other person is such a liar, well, can you really believe me? That's how I feel about the mainstream media's hit piece on YouTubers. And Drunk Turkey Show, I mean, it looked bad, right? Why would you agree to do that? I get it. It could have been exposure for your channel. It could help you grow. No hard feelings here. I don't think that you had any bad intentions. I think you only had good intentions. I think you meant to represent true crime community well. But what ended up happening is they stabbed you in the back they twisted things that you said they edit the video a certain way you should know how that works and then they lay it out to make it look like we're all just conspiracy theorists right now i love a good conspiracy but just because i like conspiracies and i'll talk about conspiracies doesn't mean that i'm trying to create conspiracies right like i said i don't investigate people ask me What's your investigative background? What business do you have talking about these cases? You want to know my investigative background? You ever seen the Where's Waldo posters? Well, I found Waldo in every hiding spot that he has, every poster that's ever been printed. Can you say the same? Let's move on. So, I feel like the big problem here is the police department. The police department hiding everything, the state gagging everything, where there's no evidence. Do you know how much attention this case would have after arrest if they would have shown us some type of evidence that tied Brian Koberger directly to the crime? I mean, sure, you'd still have a few crazy people who would come out and they would be like, well, AI video exists, or hey, that doesn't really prove this or that. You're always going to have that because some people are just crazy. Some people are just parasocial weirdos and they can't let it go. They fall in love. He got love letters. I mean, I don't care if you think he's guilty or innocent. Who is sending love letters to somebody that they don't know who is suspected of murdering four people, right? I mean, people are just nuts these days, but at the same time, the man is presumed innocent until proven guilty. And since that gag order exists, since any report that we've heard from News Nation is constantly unverified information because it's a leak, right? We don't know where that's coming from. We don't know who that's coming from. We don't know if it's somebody that would even know, right? We have to trust News Nation. And what did I say earlier about mainstream media, right? If they lie to you so many times, you can't trust them. So that's why you have so many people coming out and saying, did Brian Koberger do it? Is he the right guy? Show us something that says, yes, this is the right guy. Because so far, the only evidence that we have is the probable cause that you used to arrest him, right? You found a knife sheath at the area that had trace DNA. Trace DNA. There seems to be a lot of confusion here where people think it's blood. But it's not. It's where he touched the button. And the crime lab at Moscow, they could not find anything on this knife sheath. 
And then I guess there might have been some problem with the chain of custody from that point on. And then the knife sheath went to a different lab and then they found DNA and they were able to put together a profile of the touch minuscule DNA left on this knife sheath. And then they were able to use that to connect it back to Brian Koberger's father as saying the person that this DNA belongs to is the son of this person. And then we have cell phone pings. Now people have a lot of questions about the cell phone pings, right? Why did it say that the phone pinged on there on November the 14th that they don't think he was in Moscow that day, but his phone still pinged on the tower in Moscow. But then they're saying because his phone pinged on the tower in Moscow the night before that he was definitely guilty of this crime. But that's not exactly how that goes. What they did there, that's the probable cause affidavit, right? And what they did there was they used the phone pings traveling in the same direction as the car. And then they said, okay, we've got video of this car in this area and this phone is pinging off this tower, so we're good, right? Well, then they have that the phone turned off right before the murders took place. And then it turns back on after the murders have already taken place. Then it goes back to the area around 930 that morning. Here's the thing. If they show up to court and that's all they have, if all they have are the cell phone pings, if they don't have the GPS coordinates from where they went and got all the data from Apple or Google or whoever the hell owns Android in order to, to pinpoint his location because absolutely every phone can pinpoint your location. If they show up to court without pinpoint locations while that phone was on, well, something in the milk ain't white. That's just the way I see that. They have absolutely no reason not to come with loads of cellular data, right? Now, we know that Brian Kohlberger studied forensics. We know that he did criminal justice, that he had a master's in criminal justice, that he was going for his PhD in criminology. We know certain things. So certain things people bring up about, well, he had black rubber gloves. And why else would he have black rubber gloves? Uh, PhD student for criminology, staging scenes, trying to, you know, recreate things in class. There could be any number of reasons why somebody would have black gloves. I mean, got a whole box, right? You know why? Because I do tattoos and we use black gloves. The black gloves and the blue surgical gloves, the only difference is the black ones are like nine millimeter where the other ones are like five millimeter. It's not crazy that somebody has surgical gloves at their house. There's plenty of reasons to have this type of glove laying around. They sell them at Harbor Freight. They don't only sell them at the murder shop, right? I thought that was the most ridiculous thing. The police have not given us any information that solidifies to people that Brian Koberger is indeed guilty of the crime. So they've trickled down little things from the arrest and the probable cause, but probable cause is not beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, a normal person is going to think, well, they probably have more, right? They probably do have more evidence that's going to come out at trial. But we have to be real here and say, we can't just assume evidence exists and then condemn a man who's supposed to be presumed innocent until proven guilty when we have no idea what the evidence even is. We don't know if those leaks are true or not. This idea that Brian Koberger's case is open and shut is absolutely asinine. He might get off because all they have to do is instill reasonable doubt. They don't have to prove why that reasonable doubt exists. They just have to instill some type of doubt. They don't have to give an alternative story. It helps. It would really help, but they don't have to give that alternative story. All they have to do is plant doubt into the prosecution's case. There's no chance this case is just open and shut. If it was and the police had any brains about them whatsoever, then they would know that all they have to do is release one piece of evidence that proves Brian Koberger did the crime. But what it seems like is they have a lot of circumstantial evidence that they think is going to make up a story and that story is going to be believable. But all it takes is a little bit of reasonable doubt. What do you guys think about it? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel to see more. Hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I post. 
Have a great day, and we'll see you later.